Hi there, I'm Matt Montgomery. I'm part of the agronomic team here in the central and west central part of the state of Illinois for Pioneer. Today, I'm out in a field that you can see at one time had a fair amount of winter annual pressure that was brought under control. But since then, we've seen a ton of black cutworm feeding. And you can see what we're seeing in the camera shot. I have a clipped off plant here and I have a clipped off plant over there and there's another one just out of camera shot. That's a lot of black cutworm feed. So I wanna review that pest. I wanna talk about thresholds. I wanna talk about how it got to some of these sizes. And then I wanna talk about an important implication going into the fall. So let's talk about the pest itself. Black cutworm does not overwinter in the Midwest. It overwinters along the Gulf Coast and it migrates back up into the area with spring storm fronts. Those moths that come back in with those spring storm fronts are going to look for a field for a location that increases the chances of their young surviving. And that means they're gonna look for fields that have green in them, like this right here. And you know that this was not a unique location. We had yellow fields left and right across the countryside. Plenty of butterweed plenty of what we call crest leaf ground cell. Those moths come in, lay those eggs, those eggs hatch on those winter annuals and begin to feed. And then you can see what happened here. We killed off those winter annuals and they moved over to the crop itself. It's black cutworm that we worry about. The way that we identify black cutworm from some other species of cutworm that we may run into that tend to be top grazers only is we look at the body segments. There are four dots on each one of those. Two will be large, two will be small. That's how we know that it's black cutworm and not one of these other ones that we get less anxious about. So when we talk about thresholds for this pest, we're talking about 3% basically cut plants. That means 3% of the plants where we had actually down below ground, down towards that growing point that got damaged, but we're not gonna wait for that. If we six, see six to 8% of the plants out in the field, showing injury, showing damage from black cutworm, that's gonna be a trigger for us keeping this field tamed down for black cutworm pressure, for us helping this field out with a rescue insecticide application. How did we get to some of the sizes that we saw here? Now, before we talk about that, you see some of the plants that we're gonna look for, some of the symptoms we're gonna look for, we're gonna look for those cut off plants we're gonna look for leaves that are cast aside that have been fed upon. Sometimes we'll see the pest itself feeding upon a leaf. Sometimes we're gonna go out here and we're gonna look around and we're gonna see plants that are pulled into the ground and if we carefully dig around with our knife, we can actually pluck up, can actually dig up the cutworm itself. And you can see some fairly large sizes that we dealt with. So how did we get to those large sizes? We never want to explain something away, but I think I know what happened in this location. Everything between these rows didn't have a neonicotinoid, didn't have a diamide, didn't have a trait. All the winter annual pressure gave this thing plenty of stuff to feed on outside of the crop and get some extraordinary size to it, combined with some warm temperatures that helped it advance through its life cycle fairly quickly. By the time we got some really big sizes to this pest. We killed off that winter annual pressure, then it moved over to the crop. And because it's large now, that means it's gonna take a lot more to kill it. It's gonna get its licks in before it finally succumbs to those three legs of the management stool I talked about earlier. That brings up an issue that I think we absolutely have to take seriously. The issue of winter annual pressure. You guys saw yellow fields. You could look left, you could look right. You could see them either in the distance or right next to you on the road. We saw them everywhere. And why did we see that? We have no time to work with in the spring anymore. And because of that, I think it's absolutely critical that we start thinking about fall weed control. If you haven't been doing that, I think you have to from here on out. We just don't have the time logistically to get the fields and get them all sprayed and get them cleaned up while we're trying to get a crop planted in a really tough season. It's absolutely critical that we get those fields under control. So from here on out, I'm gonna emphasize, take the idea of fall weed control seriously. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll talk with you soon. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast.
Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.